Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Michal. Welcome. <laughs> right on time. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you again for taking the time out to join my talk today. The schedule for this DEF CONF has been absolutely insane, so I do massively appreciate that this talk was something that you went, yeah, I'm going to go to that. And I suspect it's because everyone in this room saw this title and went, oh my God, it is hard. Yes. So this talk is going to be anecdotal. Um, as Greg told me before, your mileage may vary. Okay, this is, this is a collection of thoughts that I have had, that I've collected from colleagues and peers around how hard it is being in these positions of assumed authority and expected power when you have very little that you can actually leverage other than who you are and what you bring to the table. So um, in true not manager, manager style, we're going to start with a little bit of commiseration <laughs> first, okay? <laughs> so we have all been here in situations. The classic, you're not my manager. Thank God I'm not. <laughs> like you're in a, in a title where you have to be a leader, whether it's a product owner, whether it's a program manager, whether it's a project manager, whether it's a team lead, whether it's an office manager, you have to ask people to do things that they may not want to do and they are they are absolutely within their rights and will default to no you're not my manager it's crap but it happens another one is a classic passive aggressive one but it can also be a um, communication thing as well so I'll, I'll talk very very quickly to this the two of them there may be situations where you tell somebody or you dictate to a team or a team member a priority or a list to work. And they will take that as like carte blanche to be like, I'm not helping anyone else. She told me to do it. She's a product owner. I'm going to just do what she says. And sorry, can't help you. Even if I could, I'm not going to. And it's very passive aggressive. Um, the other side of that is that sometimes it can be a communication issue that if you know, we all work maybe in global teams, English isn't the first language, understanding the actual job of somebody in these positions can be a little bit challenging to non-native English speakers, sometimes even English speakers. And they may assume that you actually do have that authority. So, But it's a situation where, you know, in the positions of these leadership roles, it happens sometimes that we find ourselves facing these kind of opinions of us. The deal with that, that's your job, not mine. Yeah, it is my job. I will deal with it. But your help and support would be nice as well. We're all in this together, are we not? Um, oh, she's asking me for this again. I'm already after telling her. It'll be ready by the end of the week. I'll get to it later. I'm not answering her now. I hate when this happens because that's often a sign that, that you, the respect for your role has, is diminishing. You know, they, they don't feel like they have to. Or that you may have asked them enough times that you become an annoyance. And personal... I am not paid enough to deal with that dumpster fire. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, you probably are, unfortunately. <laughs> it probably is a dumpster fire that you have to deal with. Um, but there are two other scenarios where I can think of that that might apply. You mightn't actually be paid enough to deal with it, but the person who might have to deal with it could be struggling to find a way through it. And it's landed on you because you are often a person with great communication skills that you probably could help, maybe not solve it, but maybe dampen the flames a little bit. And because we're all good people, we should try. Um, I can't remember the other scenario. I'm sure there's plenty. And these are only just examples. I'm sure, like Greg said, your mileage varies. You've probably been in maybe not exact situations, but similar enough ones that these resonate and go, yeah, 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 that was me last week. I was there before. It, it can be a challenge. Because leading is hard. It's, it, not, if not everyone is a leader, not everyone can be a leader, and not everybody should be a leader. It has plenty of juxtapositions. Like, you need the replies, but you don't want to be annoying. You know, you, have, you ask once, you ask twice. Tenth time, I don't know whether you're going to even get the reply, because they're just going to filter you out. And that's crap. Hi, Steph. Um, you want to be proactive in your approach, like you want to get engaged with your team, you want to be there, embedded with them. But how many, how much of that then starts getting like, 
oh, she's here again. Why won't she leave us alone? We know what to do. And you don't want to be pushing at people. You want to be vocal, you want to be visible, you want to be everywhere, but you don't need to be human spam either. And that's a tricky one. I have been filtered before. It caught them out in the end, but they, they did filter me because I was too, like, I was too visible, <laughs> if you can believe it. You want to be liked by your team, not just tolerated because that's the position that you have. And that's a hugely important one. Like, you want to be part of your team. You want to feel like you can connect with them and that I'm not just here. We have to talk to Eva. We have to engage in her because she's our product owner. She's the program manager. You know, you want, to, you want to actually feel connected to these people. You want to stay motivated without getting burned out. And this is really applicable in community teams where your team is not paid to be there. You know, and you may have changing teams constantly and it's, it can be very draining and frustrating to have to like continuously start again just as new, newcomers come in or people who have been there a long time suddenly depart. And you're like, great. And finally, you do want to be accepted and also respected. Accepted by the team you're in and respected for the position that you've been put in, that you do have to lead. So they're all the down parts. We'll get, we got that out of the way. I hope it resonated with you a little bit. And this is just like reinforcement of you're not alone. I guarantee you everyone in this room has felt that way. We are a, a room of like-minded individuals, kindred souls. You're here because you were in a position of management without the management power or pay and thought it is hard. Thank God I'm not the only one that feels that way. So when you are in these positions and you don't have the backing of money, of business leverage, even a little bit of business leverage, but like you don't have the more formalities of a manager, manage, manager report relationship, you have to lead with influence rather than authority. And I'm only going to touch very briefly on this because there are studies and books and case studies and like colleagues that you could talk to that will give you way more in-depth information about how you can like build influence and then leverage that to lead. But some of the ways that I've collected from various people that I've been fortunate enough to hassle into giving me replies, and I had to ask once though, I wasn't annoying. Was I, Justin? <laughs> um, they gave me some really great tips. First and foremost, if you are in a leadership position, you have to be clear, okay? You are likely excellent communicators already. Um, Communication is not just that you can talk at ad nauseum. You have to be clear on what, you're, what the purpose is, what you're there for, what you're trying to achieve, be it personally or as a team. And having that clarity will make team members and even like team cousins, like people that you work with, they, that, that will help them understand your purpose. You need to have confidence. I got a very good tip at the conference recently that if you get told, okay, you're now the product owner, and you're like, whoa. I've never, what's a product owner? I don't really know what that is. Doesn't matter. Step into it. Own it. Be confident enough. Fake it till you make it. Because your team will, like, they can smell the fakeness. You know, they, they'll know, like, oh, why are they so timid? Why, I, I have a question. I'm, they're supposed to know the answers. Have confidence. If you don't know the answer, I'll get back to you. Good question. Let me write it down. I'll follow up. I think I could get more information on that. Leave it with me but have confidence that, you know, you, you will get the answer. You also need to make decisions. There is nothing worse than being in this position where you don't know if you should make a decision or not. Some decisions you really can't make, like hiring and firing. But there are simple decisions like, where should your team's repository land? What should your team name? Simple decisions that the team itself may not want to make and are looking to you to make as the leader. So don't be afraid to make decisions. Be confident enough to make decisions. Be clear on your decisions. You need to be flexible. Not all of your decisions are going to resonate with everybody. Uh, people will have, they might not have uh, an opinion on what you were trying to decide, but when you decide it, they will definitely have an opinion then. And sometimes their opinion is actually better. Their counter offer is, is more is better. So be, be flexible enough that you'll take that on board. You'll make changes. You, you'll be, don't be afraid to pivot. This is also applicable when you have to argue sometimes. You know, don't be afraid to like stand your ground on things that you believe in, that you're clear about, that you've already decided on. There are times where you're going to have to just say, thank you for that, but we're doing it this way. Appreciate the input, but no. Um, and that goes back to the confidence as well. Like, you know, you are in this position Stand firm when you have to, 
but make, be flexible when you need to. You need to stay focused through all that. Even with all of these conflicting opinions and decisions and you know, trying to fake it till you make it, you do need to stay focused as to why you're in this position in the first place. You know, what is your end goal? What are you trying to deliver? Is it that are you building a new community team? Are you trying to deliver on a new feature? Make sure that the end big picture goal is always there. It's always clear and you're confident in your abilities to get your team there. Delegate. For the love of God, delegate. <laughs> um, people want to feel like they're useful. Arguably, the position that we're in, in these like leadership without authority roles, you probably are the ones that feel the least useful in your teams. But you're probably not alone either. And if you delegate your, your, some of your tasks, it might empower your team members to step up and be a little bit more authoritative. You might have a budding team lead coming up if you're not afraid and confident enough to and secure enough to pass off some work to them. It's also not a one-man band either. You have a team there, utilize. Be visible. You know, it's important that your team knows where you are. It's important that your stakeholders know where you are. It's important your community members know where you are, how to find you, that you're going to show up, that, you know, if there's a chat room for your, your project, you're going to be in there. They can tag you. They can find you. You're going to show up and be there and talk to them. People want to be able to put a face to a name. How many people put, start a chat bot and you're hoping it's a human and not a bot? You know, that's, that's what you are, basically. People want to know that they're not going to just get a bot, that it's going to be a human that they, when they reach out to. Be credible. Like I said, they can sniff out fakeness. If you aren't in it for the wrong reasons because you are paid to be there, your team will just not be interested in it. They'll be... They'll, they'll do it because pro likely they're all being there. But in community teams especially, community members are there because they want to be there. And they expect you to want to be there too. And if you're there because Red Hat pays you, because Canonical pays you, your, your credibility will probably suffer in the long run. Build influence. Show up, help out, answer questions, connect people, talk to people. Make sure that you are able to leverage both your immediate ones but also, somebody mentioned just outside in the hallway, have, oh no, it wasn't you, Bren, but have the influence up as well as around you too. So you are building your credibility with your management chain, with the, the, the uppers of the business world. And you have influence there as well, that you can lean up to help who you are, who you're helping with your own team as well as influencing the people around you to deliver a project. That is often something we do forget, that we can build that influence with the authority figures as well. I'm nearly there, I think. Uh, find connections. Meet the people, both up and around you. It's important to know who you're working with. It's important to feel like you're an actual team and you are far likely to succeed in getting people to deliver projects than you are trying to mandate that these work gets delivered. This all goes to creating trust. So you've made these connections, your team feels secure, they know who you are, they felt like they, you've taken the time to get to know them. They want to, they want to deliver the work because they want to make your and then their team lives better and not just because they have to do it. If I was to pick anything from here, I would always default to being kind. There are enough not nice people, I would have said a swear word there, but there are enough not nice people in the world that we don't have to be one to each other. Plain and simple, whether you're manager, reporter, community member, be kind. You don't know what people are going through. There may be a legit reason why they, they are not able to work the way you expect, the way you've experienced. Kindness is absolutely key. And another good one that I heard is when you're in these positions of leadership, sometimes it's really important to just listen to hear somebody out. You don't necessarily have to respond. They might not even want you to respond. They might just need to feel like they have told somebody in what they feel as a position of power, what they feel as a leadership, that there's a problem, that this is what they're facing. And that might be 50, if not 60% of the work for them to like get it unblocked and move on. It's just a good manners thing anyway, <laughs> to be honest. So that's it. You're probably all doing a lot of those things, if not all of them. If any of you are doing all of them, I take my hat off to you. Um, there are some ways that we've all been trying to build influence, lead through influence rather than authority. But I just wanted to leave you on a very important 
message in these positions where you feel like you are the underdog, where you feel like you can't get after maybe some engineers because you're not a coder and like you have so much respect for them, but you're not going to come after them because you can't do their job. So I'm the lesser one here. You're not. You are valued. You have no idea how important you actually are to a team, to a community, because you are there helping the information move through. You are needed because not everybody wants to spend their time in spreadsheets, documents, uh, Jira tickets, uh, PAGR issues. They really don't. They really want somebody there to do it. And you're important to everyone in your lives, not just in work. Anyway, Finn, thank you.